On today's show, LG Chem's battery subsidiary wins an important legal case against rival SK Innovation, one that could actually have serious effects on the electric vehicle market. Audi unveils its e-tron GT halo car, and a bit of nostalgia and some clever marketing makes interest in the Cadillac Lyric EV completely sore. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we're the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. An ongoing legal battle between LG Energy Solutions and SKI reached a conclusion this week, with the US International Trade Commission ruling in LG's favour after it accused SKI of stealing trade secrets and intellectual property. Both firms have been fighting for a decade or more over electric vehicle battery IP, but this ruling has resulted in SKI being banned from importing, manufacturing or selling lithium-ion batteries in the US. However, there are three exceptions that are very important for the EV world. First, Volkswagen and Ford get exceptions to use SKI batteries for their upcoming EVs for two and four years respectively, and Kia will be allowed to use SKI imported cells to provide support and service to customers' cars that left the factory with SKI cells in them. Elon Musk was back on the Joe Rogan experience this week, and that means plenty of headlines were made for the EV world. Sadly, due to licensing restrictions, I can't publish the video here, but Elon Musk discussed a number of interesting facts, including him promising that he wants to make the next generation Tesla Roadster hover like a rocket, as long as he can make it happen without killing people. And Musk also noted that the new yoke-like steering wheel in the Model S and Model X won't need to be used that much because, quote, autopilot is getting good enough that you won't need to drive most of the time. Musk also let slip that the Tesla Semi has a battery pack capacity of around 500 kilowatt hours, which is far smaller than people had previously thought it would be. He also stated he's pitched the idea of a carbon tax to the Biden administration, and the suggestion was apparently well received. Audi revealed its new halo car this week in the form of the 2021 Audi e-tron GT and its range-topping sibling, the Audi RS e-tron GT. Looking slightly lower and longer than the A7 or S7, the e-tron GT is based on the same J1 platform that underpins the Porsche Taycan. This means it gets the same impressive performance and 85 kilowatt hours of usable battery capacity. Built for driving performance and cruising on the Autobahn all day, the e-tron GT isn't going to win any range competitions. Audi estimates an expected EPA range of around 238 miles, 383 kilometers. Price-wise, you're not going to get much change from 100,000 US dollars for the e-tron GT, while the RS e-tron GT will cost closer to 140,000. 100 million dollars. That's how much the official prize is on offer for the X Prize carbon removal, as personally sponsored by Elon Musk. Musk had hinted he'd be funding a competition to devise the best way of removing carbon dioxide from the Earth's atmosphere last week, but now we have a few more details to go with. As the official XPRIZE website details, the competition will officially open with team registration available on Earth Day this year, that's April 22nd, and will conclude on Earth Day 2025. The competition will require teams to demonstrate solutions that can pull carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere or from the oceans. These solutions must not only scale to gigaton levels, but also be capable of storing that CO2 safely in a permanent and environmentally friendly way. It's definitely going to be a competition to watch. Toyota, despite its excellent first-generation RAV4 EV, has long been an opponent of electric vehicles, expressing at both a corporate and executive level its preference for hybrid vehicles and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This week, it announced it would be bringing two all-new electric vehicles to the US 
alongside a plug-in hybrid model. So far, so good. But in the press release announcing this news, Toyota couldn't resist publishing details of an in-house study, which it released the source codes for, stating, quote, GHG of currently available BEV model and PEV model are roughly the same in on-road performance when factoring in pollutants created by electricity production for the average US energy grid used to charge batteries. In other words, while Toyota is now bringing a new EV or two to market, it's still very much doing everything it can to create confusion over which vehicle is ultimately better for the environment, even when the majority of scientific studies disagree. With more and more Teslas on the road, there is increasing pressure on Tesla's supercharger network. This is particularly problematic in the rush hour in areas of high density of Teslas passing through, with queues forming for the most popular of supercharger sites. To get around this problem, Tesla has just expanded an existing program designed to reward customers who delay charging until off-peak hours. Announced for February 20th, 27th and March 6th, Tesla will offer 50% discounts for customers who shift their Tesla supercharger use across Norway and Sweden. Customers get discounted electricity, and Tesla gets to benefit from paying less for peak rate electricity. It's a win-win all around. Talking of electricity use, it is official. The average home in Norway now uses much more electricity than it used to, and it's all down to the massive popularity of electric cars, as well as increased use of electric radiators in the winter. According to data published this week, 5 million Norwegian customers used as much electricity as twice as many Swedish customers, thanks to Norway's drive to shift its energy use away from fossil fuels. It makes Norway's per capita electricity consumption the second highest in the world, second only to Iceland. But in the same week, Norway detailed how it became the largest net exporter of electricity in Europe, overtaking France's nuclear-heavy power network. How did this happen? Simple. Norway found it had to boost output from its extensive hydroelectric dam network to prevent them from overfilling during a particularly wet second half to last year. When we make a video on new electric vehicles, we try to reiterate the fact that your mileage will, and usually does, vary from official figures. But this week, a new report from Edmunds showcased that very nicely, detailing that some cars do better on range than others. Testing a variety of EVs currently on sale in the US, it plotted real-world versus EPA range ratings and found that the Audi e-tron Sportback, Chevrolet Bolt EV, Ford Mustang Mark e Kia e Niro, Mini Cooper SE, Hyundai Ioniq EV, Hyundai Kona EV, Porsche Taycan and Nissan Leaf SL all easily exceeded their official range ratings, but that the Polestar 2 and every Tesla model failed to meet EP estimates. It's worth going and reading the report to see how your EV performed. The Growing Renewable Energy and Efficiency Now Act of 2021 has been reintroduced to the US legislature. I say reintroduced because it had originally been introduced during the last session and it got nowhere, but with a change in power in the White House and both houses, the bill's sponsors are now pretty hopeful. If passed in its current form, it would include a slew of measures designed to make things easier for the clean energy and green vehicle world, in addition to raising the US federal tax credit for photovoltaic solar panel installations to 30%, it would extend the limits for electric vehicle purchase credits, meaning that Tesla and Chevrolet electric vehicles could once again be eligible for purchase incentives. It would also introduce a credit for used EV purchases, add energy storage technologies to the list of eligible clean tech for various incentives and write-offs, and support the establishment of a new clean energy sector workforce. Meanwhile, half a world away, Quite literally, New Zealand announced its support for 22 new low-emission transportation projects across the country. These include providing secure electric bike storage and charging for a community bike share project, assisting with the purchase of two second-hand Nissan Leafs for a community car share scheme, further expanding New Zealand's public charging network in collaboration with the partner ChargeNet, and much more. 
Looking at larger projects, the funding will set up two new extended test drive programs for commercial customers in New Zealand for both battery electric and hydrogen electric vehicles. With New Zealand already one of the few countries in the world to tackle COVID right, I think its tackling of clean energy and transportation projects is just going to make more and more non-Kiwis green with envy. We are all familiar by now, I'm guessing, with the way in which some car dealerships will quite eagerly steer you away from buying an electric car and instead do everything they can to get you in a petrol or diesel powered one. In the age of Covid, as more sales go online, I'm guessing that pressure has subsided significantly as people are less likely to casually pick up a different car in that setup. But this week we heard about Mercedes-Benz official website doing exactly what dealers are known for doing, trying to advertise Mercedes-Benz GLE models as a comparison to customers who are already using the online configuration tool to spec themselves out a Mercedes-Benz EQA EV. The thing being highlighted, how much cheaper the gas guzzlers were compared to the EV. Now, if that doesn't sound like desperation, I don't know what is. And finally, last week was the Super Bowl, as I'm sure many of you know. And as we discussed on last week's show, the Super Bowl this year had a pretty high number of EV ads played during it. One of them featuring Edgar Scissorhands, that's right, the son of Edward Scissorhands, has driven a significant spike in interest in the Cadillac Lyric EV. Cars.com said this week after the advert was aired, it experienced a noticeable rise in searches for the Cadillac Lyric, even though the car hasn't launched yet. While the ad didn't focus on the car all that much, it doesn't feature until the end of the video, in fact, the car's party trick, Super Cruise, is I'm sure what attracted most people's attention. That said, the car's charge cable is very clear in the video and it's pretty clear that the Lyric is an EV, so score one for EVs. That said, how would Edgar unplug the car without snipping the cable? Inquiring minds need to know. And on that note, we are done for today. But before we go, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched yet, please do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. They make it super easy to make that switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful and energy independent for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time. Bye.